In this video, I'll walk you through my exact process for landing and delivering high value websites. If you want to deliver with confidence and charge what your work is worth, then stick with me as I share how I generate leads and guide them through each step from the very first call to the final handoff. I'm Matt Jumper, and I've been designing websites for over 15 years. From freelancing to running my own studio, I've refined this process to be as tight and reliable as possible so projects run smoothly and clients get results. My process can be split into six different phases, which I'll deep dive into. We have the discovery call, the questionnaire, proposal, strategy, design and development, and handoff. Now, the discovery call is always the first step. You might wonder, how do we even land that call in the first place? To be transparent, I don't do any outreach. Almost all of my leads come organically from places like referrals from past clients, creatives and friends, social media, especially YouTube and Twitter, Framer's ecosystem, their expert program, submitting websites to the gallery, selling templates, components, and my Framer Commerce plugin, which is Shopify for Framer. Contra Freelancer platform, Flex Academy courses, and my studio mod, which often gets discovered through design galleries. If you want to be successful long-term, you need to cultivate inbound inquiries by consistently creating and sharing great work and becoming well-known within a network. So let's dive into the process. What's the secret to outputting great websites? It's getting the right inputs from your client. When you know what to ask, you can nail the brief. And that begins on the discovery call. So once a potential client has reached out to me, I set up a discovery call, which is a quick gut check to see if there's mutual alignment for both myself and the client without getting into the hard questions just yet. I keep it relatively high level and try to get five things out of it, knowing I'll get more detailed answers in the questionnaire if we both decide to move forward. The first is purpose. So why are we even designing or building a new site? Is it about conversion rates, credibility, performance, or just because the old site is dated? Just getting to that core reason. And then what does success look like? Is there a specific metric that we can track? Is there qualitative feedback from users or maybe just a level of polish? I want to establish what this is to inform all decisions throughout the process and be able to measure success after delivery. And then we have what I call a brand check. So clients often say, oh yeah, my brand's fine. I just need a new website. And that's rarely the actual case. A website is just the medium where a brand gets expressed. Think about it. If you're deciding what font or color to use in a website, that's a brand decision. And every great website redesign you've seen, I guarantee is actually just a rebrand in some capacity. So before the call, I try to get familiar with the state of not just their website, but their brand. And then on the call, try to understand what their appetite for change is and how much creative autonomy they're actually willing to give me. That clarity shapes what's actually needed to deliver on their goals and defines the scope. Then we have budget and timing. So I ask if there's a rough budget to work back from, and if not, I'll just share either what my minimum project price is or a high level range of what to expect. I ask if there's a deadline or a rough timeline they're trying to hit, and then if they're married to any of the platforms that they're currently using or want to explore new ones. And right now, I'm usually not taking any calls outside of Framer anyways, but if you have multiple tools in your belt, this will help you understand what the scope is like. Then we get into roles and responsibilities. So who's my point of contact? Who's giving feedback and the final approvals? Is anyone from their team going to be contributing to any specific area of the site, maybe copywriting or SEO input? One thing I like to do is treat my main contact as a teammate as opposed to a client with their boss being the client. So we work together to get the best possible result and we make each other look great to their boss. Usually at this point in the call, in my head, I can bucket this project into one of four categories. The first one being the ideal scenario where the budget and the timing is solid and I'm very confident in the output, meaning either they give me solid brand assets to work with or the autonomy to create something beautiful. The second is the budget and time isn't great, but maybe it's an opportunity for a portfolio piece or the opposite of that where the budget, the timing is good, but maybe the portfolio opportunity isn't really there. And those two is basically where the debating of taking on the project kind of comes in. And then the last one where budget and timing is poor, portfolio opportunity is poor, and that is just a quick pass for me. That's it for the discovery call. It's quick, it's clear, and it's confidence building. And if everyone's aligned, as the next step, I send over the questionnaire. So the questionnaire, it's all about clarity and getting the right details from the client before any real work begins. And I send this after the discovery call to make sure it's worth both of our time to actually continue down this path and fill everything out. So I break the questionnaire into two main buckets, the first one being the inputs for scope or the requirements. So this is where I uncover everything. I need to create a bulletproof proposal. I make sure I cover all the bases of what a client could want or need on their site to be successful, even if it's something I don't directly offer. For example, I can cover copywriting and that's a skill set that I've built up over the years. But if the client wants somebody to write a bunch of blog content that's SEO focused, I'd be happy to take that on and bring on a specialist to actually tackle that part of the project. So if your specialty is limited to certain areas, 
Just be transparent about your offering or bring in somebody who can help you deliver. So that questionnaire is going to cover sitemap and content, just understanding what actually is going to be needed on the site. Copy and SEO, again, who's providing what. From a brand perspective, all the assets that we're going to have to work with. And then on the development side of things, a lot of just technical requirements to understand what's needed. Then the second area of the questionnaire is the inputs for design. So this is where I try to get as familiar with their business, industry, and brand as possible. It gives me everything I need upfront to make confident, rationalized decisions to deliver a site that stands out from competitors and actually solves the client's goals. It also helps educate the client and they recognize all the factors that go into a great website and see me as the expert guiding the process and not just taking orders. This helps rationalize the costs included in the proposal. In this part of the questionnaire, we get into the business foundation, the goals, competitive landscape, some marketing questions and brand assets and inspiration. Next, we have the proposal, contract and payment. So once I have all the details from the questionnaire, specifically from the requirements doc, I put together the proposal. Here's the blueprint of what's inside. We have our deliverables, so pages, features, platforms, integrations. We have our work back schedule with the amount of check-ins, the approvals, the amount of approvals along with the time required, and the delivery dates and key milestones. Then we just have the budget, which is essentially just a cost breakdown, and then the payment agreement of 50% upfront, 50% on delivery. Once this is all good and approved, then I'll put together a contract, which is essentially just a proposal with some legal terms attached to it. The contract is to protect both parties and being clear with deliverables, timing and budget stops the otherwise inevitable scope creep and lets everybody sleep better. It makes it easy to point to the contract whenever there's any debate. And another thing that I've actually recently started doing is putting a clause in the contract where if a client is late for any of the great approvals or providing any content that is blocking us, I charge them per week that the project is delayed. So I used to let clients drag out timelines and a four week project would easily turn into you know four months, but adding this clause changed everything and no one's actually had to pay it yet. So it works. So once we're locked in, it's time for strategy and the real work to begin. This is where I take a deep dive into the second part of the brand questionnaire and become really familiar with their business, competitors, and goals. Also hit my favorite website design galleries to pull some inspiration. So the first deliverable is a sitemap with the content structure. I use FigJam to create the sitemap with the navigation, pages with every section documented inside, the footer structure, and then identifying any CMS or dynamically generated pages. Seeing the whole site structure from a bird's eye view is super helpful to me to understand what I'm building and get that alignment. But often this is the first time the client will actually see their website in this way, really helping them understand every decision up to this point and seeing everything kind of holistically. At this stage, I may create wireframes, but they're often an unnecessary step. So it really depends on the project and what I agree upon with the client. And design directions come next again, relying on that questionnaire to guide every decision. I'll present two or three visual directions, each including a mood board along with the hero section mock-up, and that's enough for the client to weigh in on the vibe, the fonts, the colors, and the general feel. Once all this is ready to go, I'll hop on a call with them to walk through all my thinking. And of course, if there's any feedback, we'll go through another round. Then we get into design and development. So with the sitemap and direction approved, it's on to designing the real pages. I've been designing websites inside of Figma for years now, but since I've been using Framer to actually build them out, I've been trying to transition my entire process to be entirely in Framer when possible. And they keep releasing new features to make the design process even easier. So that first check-in in this phase includes a full homepage with a responsive state, and then one or two other key pages for approval. Since we aligned on the mood board and the direction, the feedback here is rarely anything significant, but it's an appropriate time to get into the details. And by the way, I found that smaller budget projects often bring in more feedback while higher budget clients usually give you more trust. So then once approved, I'll blow out the rest of the pages. And since I'm building these inside a framer already, it makes it super easy to set up textiles, color styles, components, templates, all that stuff. So it's so fast and efficient to build out the rest of the site. Once everything's done, I'll go back and make sure all the technical aspects are configured properly, like semantics, accessibility, SEO, et cetera, and then clean up all the layers and organization. And then once the site's done, I QA a ton and go through my checklist to make sure everything's ready for delivery. And by the way, if you wanna go deeper into my design or framework workflow, I built two courses with Flux Academy. You can check out in the description below. Then we come to the final section, the launch and handoff, which seems pretty simple, but obviously it's a crucial step. So if I've built the site inside a framer, this is where I transfer the project right into the client's account and I help them with the custom domain setup if they need it and then walk them through how to make any edits and it's time to publish and take their site live. For bigger teams, I'll set up a full education session and if requested, 
make sure there's documentation for anybody who needs it. In the contract, by the way, I typically add a 30 day bug fix warranty and then I make it clear what happens after that. So eitherly, they can hire me on an hourly rate or I can upsell a retainer for ongoing support. It's important to follow up after the site's been delivered to see how the site's doing against your goals and make sure everything's satisfactory. You can also grab a testimonial and any helpful data or insights for a case study. Either way, it's great to constantly stay in touch to keep you top of mind for any future projects or recommendations to other friends or people in the industry. That's my process start to finish. And while the details can shift depending on the project, the framework stays the same. At the end of the day, the process itself isn't what's important, but what the process gives you. Process equals confidence, confidence equals trust, and trust lets you charge what your work is worth.